History is full of stories of Bigfoot amongst the American Indians and many other tribes around the world. People to this day still claim they see Bigfoot. Most people have never seen Bigfoot. They will never see Bigfoot. I'm going to show you why. And I'm going to tell you my story about one particular Bigfoot, the Kimichi Beast. Follow me along on this adventure because it's real. Now, a lot of people go missing up in Oklahoma, Arkansas area. At any given time, over a thousand people have gone missing. A lot of them in the wilderness area or national parks. It is dangerous up here. This is for real. This is a real expedition. This is not one that you see on TV where they're flying them in and pretending to be in the woods and flying them out. I am actually doing it and have been doing it my whole life and it is dangerous. There are bears up here, big ones. And there are mountain lions up here, 220 pound males that can drag a man off. It is dangerous up here. So a lot of you may see this and you may want to come exploring and looking for Bigfoot. It is dangerous, make sure you are prepared. People go missing up here and they're never found again. Now, the strange thing is, for a lot of years, the wildlife management people said there was, was no mountain lions up here. They had long ago ceased to be. For years they claimed it, but they've proven there are mountain lions up here. 
Now, if a 220 pound mountain lion, and it is a rugged area, it's understandable. If a 220 pound mountain lion can't be found, are you gonna tell me Bigfoot can't hide up here? It's night again. Now I plan on spending two weeks here this time. There's 14 nights around this campfire in the dark. Got no fancy lights here except for this flashlight. Is red bangs and hog, you take take that on account. It's fact. Well, this is my second night. I started off the first night having to sleep in the cab of the truck. Uh, it's been very, very dry and leaves everywhere. So I'm keeping the fire real small at night and I'm letting it go out early. So I'm just alone in the dark.
Well, I guess I'm not alone. There's something out here with me. I don't know what's worse, sitting out here in the dark all night alone, walking through the fog all day long. We can't see a thing. Uh, I'm not actually going seven, eight feet from the camera and I start disappearing in the fog, it's that thick. You ever been alone? If you haven't come out here, you know what feeling alone means out here in the middle of this wilderness in the dark. You really feel alone, trust me. You own your own. That's why most time I won't travel with anybody unless I know them real well. Gotta have somebody you can count on. It's too damn dangerous out here. Now there you go, if you see that red dot on my foot, it's got my whole foot swollen up. That is from ground hornet, and uh, that's why I tell you don't underestimate it when you come to these wilderness areas. One small insect can do a lot of damage to you. My foot's really swollen and quite, quite painful. And so always come prepared, come for medical kit. miles and miles and miles of valleys around here both sides of the mountain both sides of the ridge more than enough game to support something like a huge bigfoot more than enough there's more than enough game out here to feed many many families so is there enough environment to support the kimichi beast yes miles and miles and miles of woods
you wonder why more people don't find real evidence it's because they want to go to the work climbing these hills over these boulders you see the size of this boulder it gets a lot worse than that where i go and uh most of these people are not actually searching this kind of area and it's this type of area that you'll find actual facts and evidence in whoo you'd also need a little air been broke off would have took something pretty strong to break that Less than 100 yards from where I found the original Kimichi Beast footprint. In fact, it's up on that ridge. And if I had not been looking, searching diligently for it, I'd have never seen it. It is that thick and rough and rugged out here. The ground is very compacted. It's very hard. Lots of boulders. Hard to find footprints. But that's where I found the original footprint. So I'm expecting more action now as we move further up the ridge. I'm watching carefully. You never know. You don't know if it's the Kimichi beast or you don't know if it's a bear coming down the trail. Uh, you hear those sounds, it starts getting dark and the brush is so thick I can't see anything. Even when I put the flashlight into it, I got a big one and I just cannot penetrate that brush. never know what you're going to hear out here. Sometimes, quiet, quiet, dead quiet. It's scarier when it's quiet. Sometimes, you hear the owls, hear the night birds. You can even hear the Kimichi beast. And get right up on that ridge there, look down on me, watch everything I'm doing. I haven't figured out a way. These things are really helpful, these night goggles, but I haven't really figured out a way. I can't get it to penetrate the brush. Bigger light, more shadows. Doesn't work too well. still up it's going to be up for quite a while probably till three four in the morning at least probably going to wake up in another heavy fog 
This year's been bad. Just got to wait for him to come here because I can't make him. He'll show up. Question is, can I get a picture of him? Something besides a big dark shadow. Not going to be easy. I lay here on this hillside looking over these ridges and these valleys and it's not hard to think of a time 200 years ago when nobody was here. Nobody but the beast and the animals roamed this valley. It's so quiet, rugged. Who actually knows is hidden in our history by these hills. There's some very, very unusual formations uh, in the Kimishu Mountains, things that shouldn't be here. There's a coyote den. This has been a very successful expedition. I have found several structures in the Rocky Ridge Line. One small cave back in here. I started searching the ridge line for further evidence. I located at least two more hidden in the ridge line. Now, the important thing is 
while it may look like this is just tree limbs have fallen here, they're actually very carefully placed to disguise the cave opening. Let's take a quick look at the other shelters. This is unbelievable. is another shelter and unless you knew what you're looking for you would never ever find these shelters It's unbelievable. It's right in front of you and you can't even see it. Not until you get up on it. Now right at the top, looks like just dead logs falling. They're very strategically placed shelter. Now this is a very, very old shelter. It's actually big enough in there for a 400 pound animal to hide and take refuge. See how the beams all run together? The timbers. Here is the third shelter. You can see the structure of the roof. Now this is very, very old.
as you can see how big this is. More than enough room for me. There's more than enough room for eight to 10 foot Sasquatch in here. Bigfoot as some of you like to call him. This was built. It was covered with a layer of leaves and mulch to help prevent rain from coming through. Now people have probably found this before, didn't even know what they'd found. This is not a good hunting location. The boulders block most of view. So this obviously wasn't for hunting. It was for shelter and maybe to give somebody or something a view of the valley around it, but not for hunting. Too many trees in the way. Now, this shelter is obviously very big. It was structured. It was covered with a layer of leaves and pine needles, packed with some dirt. It was to prevent rain from coming through. Something spent many, many nights in here. But it's been gone a long time. This is very, very old shelter. Could be five, six, seven years. But this was not for a hunter. Too many rocks in the way. He couldn't get a good field of view if he was hunting. It'd be a great spot for the Kimichu beast to shelter. three shelters in a row along the ridge line that I've found. There most likely are more. Now, after finding the cave, I took a little break. I researched the area. I did find some bones. Now, I don't know what this came from, but I can see the teeth marks on it. So this was done by an animal. This is not something somebody shot and left the carcass on. I can see the teeth marks and the teeth. So that's a little bit more evidence around the area of the cave. I'm going to keep searching. I know there is more here to be exposed. Well, quite often you see on TV, somebody's got a Bigfoot show and they show a bunch of limbs that have fallen against each other and, and they say it's a Bigfoot TP. I think what they call it Bigfoot TP. Uh, in reality, a lot of them, they have a lot of limbs on it. It looked like a regular TP. They're fake. They were man-made. Okay. The others were created by down shear and, ro and tornadoes and that kind of stuff. Very common in the woods. So what's different between that and what I'm showing you, the shelters I'm showing you? One, the location. They're in very, very remote locations and rugged locations. Two, the building shows a definitive purpose, construction. There was construction intent, not just some limbs laying around or stacked together. They actually, some of these actually had mud put over them, leaves put over them, moss put over them to create a shelter. Okay. So could a man have done it? Only on some of them. Several of them were into the caves and no hunter is doing that. No hunter is going to build a shelter like that. Um, the years, the age, the place where they're found, 
Uh, the fact that they show construction intent means something had to have opposing thumbs to put them together. So you make up it what you will. I'm showing you shelters that are years and years old. There's many of them. Uh, you just have to know what to look for. You, and then you see the fact that some of them, the entrance is hidden. That again shows intent. Uh, Hunter's not doing that. Hunter may make a shelter between two rocks, put up the sun to keep the rain off him. Not likely. It wasn't a good hunting spot. He's not going to take and seal himself in for a bunch of limbs to try to disguise that he's there. What the caves are used for? You decide. I'm just showing you the evidence. <laughs> If the Kim Meacher beasts exist or Bigfoot exists, why can't they find his bones? Well, let me tell you, for over 20 years, I've been coming and going through these wilderness areas. And this particular area is over 30 miles in diameter. I have never found a deer skeleton. I have never found a wild hog skeleton, but they're here and there's plenty of them. But through all those years, I have never found any bones from either of those. Does it tell you something? Bones just disappear up here. Whatever happens to them, happens to them. But just because there aren't bones doesn't mean he doesn't exist. I'm climbing one of these ridges and I start finding these buds broken off. They're broken off the trees. What does that mean? It means it's feeding on the buds. There's a lot of animals that eat the buds of these trees to get a lot of nutrition. I told you the clues are small, but they're there. And look, I have hidden in the leaves a bunch more. That's 
all type of nuts out here in this wilderness, including acorns. Plenty of fish in the summer. Easy to catch them out of the streams. Plenty of game in the winter. Enough to feed a Bigfoot, including the Kimishi Bigfoot. trying to record for several more hours into the night and see what happens. Gonna move forward some.
we're going to sit out here for a while with the light off and try to monitor what happens. It's really thick. Something big could easily pass between these trees and you wouldn't see them. It's darker than it looks. Don't worry. I brought some emergency help. It's so dark in here, you almost can't see which way to run. I can hear movement, but the leaves are so wet, it's very soft. It's hard to tell where it's coming from. It's so foggy over there where the cave actually is. It's so thick, I can't see if anything is moving around it or not. Let's do a sweep of the area with the camera. You can just feel there are things in the woods with us.
as I've said before, you can't take a gun out here. They can smell the gunpowder from a long ways off. You can't get a gun anywhere around them. Of course, that's how they survive. I just saw something on the ridge. I don't know if you can see it. Back there on that ridge. I saw it moving on the ridge to the right and then it moves off into that dark fog. I'm afraid if I shine the light, it'll just give it warning and the light's not gonna cut through this fog. It's just like a halo. If you can see the big dark hump, that's the top of the caves. That's where I saw the movement.
It's so dense I can't see anything that's moving around me. It's way denser. fog is so bad that even the hunters have given up hunting right now. You can't see nothing through a scope out there. It's broad daylight and this fog is so bad you can't see a thing down in that valley. Uh, I'm going to continue trying to use the night camera at night, but with this fog, it's bad enough at night, uh, you have a good chance of walking off the ridge or stepping in a hell of a bad hole at night trying to walk around with that camera. And so it, you see how bad it is in daytime. It's nothing but a solid white fog down there right now. Well, the, the fog has cleared away, got a little sun, it's a little warmer, and so I've got somebody here that can tell you a little more about the history of Bigfoot in southeast Oklahoma in the Kimmichi Mountain area. I want you to hear what he has to say. The tribes in North America all have belief in the culture of Bigfoot or Sasquatch or Champagne, whatever you want to call it. Around the world, they all have, there's legends of it. And the tribe is what they believe is of an ancient or mythical people, creatures. And in the, the native stories, Bigfoot may have supernatural powers such as being able to disappear. Okay, we had talked about, you actually saw the actual evidence uh, I had put in the video of the structures. All right, now you, you've hunted before, correct? Yes. Been in the woods many times? More than enough. Okay. After you saw the video evidence of the structures, is it real? It's real. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And you've been in the woods many times. Have you ever seen anything like this before? No, and I've been up in these mountains for years, and I have never run across a, a structure like that. Uh, and it depends. You know, a lot of times I was up there hunting. Other times I was researching sightings. But I have never seen the, the one structure you had. You know, the one with the, with the rocks and there were some limbs on it. Sure, I've seen that before, but I didn't pay it any, any mind. But the, uh, the one you found with the, the lean-to is what I would call it. it. It's definitely made by somebody with thumbs as you said right but it wasn't a hunter did it was it i don't believe so no, no no and and in fact uh the 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 first clip shows a smaller one and if you were to get up there you could see it was big enough to put somebody bigger than me in that thing now do you believe any hunter's going to crawl into that hole no not a hunter not a hunter, no. no. I don't think so. Not in <laughs> Oklahoma, not them. No. Uh, maybe somebody that's just looking for artifacts, they may, but yeah, not a hunter. And, and the way the limbs were placed, would you agree that it was designed to hide? 
I agree. It was definitely more of a hiding spot than just a random fall of the leaves. Yeah, there's no way it could be stems. random. No, no. I heard some real credible evidence. And if you go up into the LaFleur County area, the Kimichi uh, Mountain area, where the Kimichi Beast is, if you go up around Honobia, you're going to find when you stop at some of the little local stores there, uh, missing person posters and I find it real strange that so many people go missing in the area and it's not hard to find them any of the little stores you may find six seven ten of these missing person posters so it makes you wonder is there a relationship between that and the Kimichi Beast it's clear that there is something going on in the Kimichi Mountains. It is clear that in that wilderness there is something exists that most people have never seen and most people will never see. Another area in a remote man or in a, in a remote area a man was walking his dog and it led him to a pile of deer carcasses. A hog hunter was working in the or hunting in a wildlife management area and his claim was he saw a Bigfoot pick up a small hog and disappear in the woods. So over all the years with these reports and all, and there have been sighting of tracks up to 17 inches long, all these people can't be making it up or hallucinating. You know, as we said, a lot of these sightings come from solid citizens. And then you have the, uh, the Indian and Native legends and folklore that go on for years. There's clear evidence. There's clear evidence for, to make one believe that the Kiyomichi beast uh, is real. And with all the video capabilities these days, it's just a matter of time before somebody proves it. Things work good out in the open. It's hard to see anything in that brush. The light actually makes the shadows worse. He can stand right there in front of you and you can't see it because it makes him look like just a big shadow. As I said, about the best you can do is see the outline of a big dark object. It's not afraid to walk right through your camp in the middle of the night. Not at all. Being out here alone, test your steel. Because you don't know what's going to happen at all.
pitch black out there. This lantern doesn't put out a lot of light. Most of what you're seeing is off the camera. This helps. It's only good for three or four feet out. Way off in the distance, I'm hearing this. It's not coyote. I don't know if you can hear it. Well, guess it's time to put the fire out, go to bed, hope for the best. Get my fire going. The way the moon looks, gonna be more rain coming. Been a tough trip. Fog, heavy fog, rain, 28 degrees at night. Sometimes not even warming up till noon to about 50 degrees. I got lucky, one or two days, got up to about 65. I usually come in the fall, early fall, it's a lot better. I decided to do this, see what would happen. This print is. I'm gonna show you what I actually found. Now, given there's millions of acres of wilderness around here, a lot of people don't realize this immediate area is 30 miles around and literally nothing. And uh, I don't think I've ever seen a print like this before. So I'm gonna post it and show it to you. You make of it what you will. Like I said, this is not a big footprint. Now, it's obvious that these reports were actually reported. The reports are real. This is not something I'm making up. Uh, the actual reports, we got a lot of this data uh, off actual reports. And so the fact that there are so many reports uh, lends to the credence or credibility of the evidence that we're finding. Bigfoot just appears and he disappears. It's almost impossible to see him. He blends in so well. Some people think that is some kind of magic or something. Uh, I actually think it has to do with the human mind because we don't normally see things in the woods. The woods are very dense and people have a tendency to focus on their movement through the woods. And we don't normally see things in the woods standing unless we see movement. And so a, a, a lot of times, I mean, if you're walking down the trail and all of a sudden you realize there's Bigfoot beside a tree, it, it would almost, I, I can see how some people would think it was like by magic. In order to see a Bigfoot, you actually have to spend some time in the wilderness and, or, or have property near wilderness. Well, 
I put it like this. I feel good about this. I feel good because we found something so early. Sometimes I, I go two and three weeks before I find anything. Finding the real evidence is not easy. The actual evidence is not easy. It's small evidence, but it's important evidence. And when you put it together, it helps you come to a conclusion. There's nothing fake about this expedition.